The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff or management of visionary related entertainment. Good morning. It's 7.06, Monday morning, August the 5th. That means it's time for Maui Topia with Ori Kobelman. Good morning, Ori. Good morning, Gary. And good morning, everybody. Maui Topia will be an ideal utopian society of the future, a first of its kind place in the world on the scale of over 100,000 people, where thanks to technology, all of us have our survival needs met of food, clothing, and shelter while pursuing our individual self-actualization. A place where we'd find true happiness by each contributing our unique gifts to the community. A place where we can all coexist in peace and harmony with no crime and where we can all help each other grow and succeed. Maui Topia's free market economics will be based on regulated capitalism and make the island a real paradise, Maui truly no kaoi. In Maui Topia, we all win as we serve the rest of the world as a model of the society of the future. Today we have a very special guest calling in. A pioneer doc pioneering doctor and healer, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel. She's the author of the book, The Quest, Heal Your Life, Change Your Destiny. In addition to asking her about healing, I'm gonna ask her about each one, how each one of us can find their true purpose in life and contribute his or her gift to creating Mauitopia. Whether it's pioneering work in the psyche, bringing out her landmark discoveries in global conferences, writing books, leading the quest trainings, or expressing her musical talents, Aurora Juliana Ariel possesses the proverbial Midas touch. Her brand of alchemy is the sacred with sort, yielding a gold one can only discover within. Pioneering doctor and scientist, author and musician, entrepreneur and producer, mystic and healer, Aurora is a renaissance woman for the new millennium. Number one best-selling author, creator of The Quest, and award-winning author of the Earth 2012 to 2033 series, she is a pioneering doctor and healer whose research and work have given her a profound understanding of the psyche and tools to heal and ailing humanity. Working with countless individuals with miraculous results, she has made many landmark discoveries, bringing a new understanding to our present planetary equation. She holds 38 certificates and degrees in advanced healing methods, as well as a BA, MA, and PhD in psychology. She is also a kahuna in the Hawaiian tradition, successor of and Hawaiian kahuna in the Morna Simeona lineage, Shaolin Grand Master Pang. Her landmark discovery of the cause of suffering and the development of a cure, the quest, is her legacy to a planet. Her formula can be found in The Quest, Heal Your Life, Change Your Destiny, which she has gifted free forever via all her websites, giving tools to transform lives, actualize potentials, and help end suffering on Earth. To date, she has launched the Quest 7 level certificate training courses and developed the Quest rehabilitation models for prisoners, abused women, youth at risk, addicts, veterans, and individuals with PTSD, mental imbalances, and brain chemistry disorders, and a host of optimum health, lifestyle, weight loss, and other programs. Committed to positive world change, she is a humanitarian futurist with an extraordinary heart and offering for humanity who has dedicated her life to creating a better world through the Aurora Trust and its vehicles of planetary service, the Earth Vision Foundation, the Institute of Advanced Healing, the Quest University, and AEOS. She founded the Earth Vision Foundation and Earth Vision Alliance to bring forth her vast humanitarian endeavor the Earth Vision Center Project, which is a living library of the advances of our time set within a pristine natural environment. 
Inspired to translate her knowledge into healing and life-transforming media productions, Dr. Ariel launched her multimedia company, AEOS, and released 34 first products in seven collections of music, books, and audio CDs since 2008, with many more to come. In the groundbreaking Earth 2012 to 2033 series, she speaks eloquently of the significance of this historic time and the challenges before us, bringing a timely remedy and insights inspiring people worldwide to make a difference. She was supposed to be calling in at 7.10 and now it's 7.11, so I guess uh, I have a few questions ready to ask her. And uh, she's not here. She hasn't called yet. No. Oh, here we go. Okay. Perfect timing. Good morning. Good morning. Is this Dr. Ariel? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and it's perfect timing. I just well, I, as I was dialing, I looked at the clock, and it was 11.11 over here in um, Aspen, Colorado. Yes, you must be on the mainland. Uh-huh. It's funny. It's good timing because I literally just finished reading your introduction, and uh, Gary and I were sitting here uh, waiting for your call, and you called. <laughs> <laughs> there are synchronicities that happen. So my first question for you is, what initiated your quest? Um, that is a, that was quite a catalyst, I think, in the beginning. It was my mother's severe mental illness. Uh, she became very ill out of the blue when I was 19. And 23 hospitalizations later, uh, they finally got her a bit sick stabilized towards the end of her life, but it was a 36-year journey for me, and in the early days, and I think through her whole life, that period of her life, I just had this white fire to bring a cure to her, to find out answers, to find a way to alleviate the suffering, and hers as well as my own in dealing with this, and it drew me into this life's quest which is a wonderful book, which I've read most of. So tell us about your breakthrough healing system, The Quest. Well, I, I found early on that the upsets that we go through can be resolved very quickly. Uh, the entangled messes that we get into with, with others can, can actually um, be resolved within ourselves. And that what's really happening is something deeper, something below our conscious awareness. And so through my mother's illness, through, through um, an incurable heart condition, I, I um, contracted in, when I was 33, and I was told I would debilitate quickly to death. Th these things compelled me deeper and deeper beyond normal health and optimum health programs which I do create for my clients and students, but also that there was this, this unconscious activity going on in our psyches that were creating all the problems in our lives. So the, the system I developed was a way to actually isolate what was going on. Like, let's say you're having a big issue with somebody and you're having all of this upset going on, I found how to follow that upset into the subconscious to find the part of self, which is called a subpersonality, or I call them inner aspects, that is having all the upset, and to take that part through a healing journey, which became a seven-step process, to a complete resolution and healing. Mm -hmm. And then I not only found that you could resolve your issues really quickly and in minutes doing this process, but you could find the underlying cause and patterning of why you would keep having these type of experiences in your life, why it would draw in this. And I liked you talked about in the book about self-counseling 
And I was curious, have you ever had anybody that you've healed who has multiple sclerosis, who says, I used to have multiple sclerosis, but now I'm healed of that? No, I haven't, but I do think that this, on top of the an optimum health program, as you probably know, so that you're you're impacting this condition on all levels, I found is is the most effective in any kind of illness and and challenging life condition. Somehow people were just drawn to me, even though I'm more of a, fo- uh, my focus is more a research psychologist and a pioneer in my field, delving deeper and deeper. Consistently people have found me and they've had these impossible conditions or things that seemed incurable or unchangeable. And so I was able to be like a Houdini assisting mm. them and, and myself through my own life predicaments to get free of these conditions. Invariably, I found that every single thing that we're faced with of an adverse nature is coming from our unconscious. And what that means is that there is that part of us that has beliefs and these beliefs have created patterns that then create the movies and conditions of our lives. We also have a higher self, our authentic self, our innate natural spirit self that I found in every session, too. And that part of us wants to bring health, happiness, well-being, and ease on all levels of our lives, in all areas of our lives. But it can't when these programs are running. So it's like a virus has gotten into the human computer of of a world <laughs> of the psyches of humanity and that's why we're seeing all the troubles we are and we're dealing with all of this well i'll be happy to be the uh, fr- you know there's half a million people in the united states who have ms or multiple sclerosis and i'm one of those people so i use a walker to walk and i'd be very happy to use the quest to uh overcome the ms and say some day once i had ms but no longer I, yeah, I've seen a lot of miracles with it. For instance, I've cured two incurable illnesses in myself. Of course, I did the quest work to find what were the underlying causes, what was the part of me and parts of me that were actually holding the physical condition in place. I'm curious, do you think part of it is timing in life? Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, like you, I've done lots of uh, self-improvement, personal growth work uh, In my case, I did a lot of hypnotherapy 20 years ago, and I've discovered a lot of my core issues. And I'm wondering if you think sometimes something like multiple sclerosis or the current condition I have is a timing issue, like if it's some lessons that I'm needing to learn at this particular time in my life. Yeah, I found that every in every instant. It's like. Well, it gives you, it puts you on a healing journey when you're dealing with something really huge like that. And it gives you so much movement when you're thinking about soul growth and empowerment and delving deeply. It causes us to go deep, deeper into the causes and to find a way out. That's true. So so it's a mortal challenge that takes you on a journey, and then on that journey you gain all this knowledge, all this wisdom, all this insight. And hopefully you come to love yourself and care about yourself more because it makes you focus on yourself and want to help yourself. And so it has all these really amazing elements. What, what I found a lot is that when people find the quest, is they've done that journey, they've done a lot of that journey, and now it's time to accelerate it and accelerate the learnings. And, you know, if it is in that highest destiny for that person, that in my case it was, um, to move out of the illnesses and to be completely free, to have my heart completely free of any sign even of illness. That's incredible. And based on that, you released your third book called The Quest, Heal Your Life, Change Your Destiny. Why for free? I just feel this is such important knowledge. 
most people don't understand what I found. There's a lot of mythology around why we get ill, why we have challenges, why our lives aren't working out. You know, people are people on this planet feel dejected. They feel like there's no way out of these conditions that we just have to live with them, live with them as best we can. And suffering is a part of our world, and that's just the way it is. And I, I just found that that's not true. I, I found the reason why they're suffering, and I found a remedy, and or developed the remedy, and we can step free of this. And that our world is encoded with suffering because our psyches are encoded with it. And as we turn within and heal that inside ourselves, we change our lives. We keep up-leveling our lives, our relationships, our health, our our you know sense of peace and and sense of who we really are. So I I just feel like I want everybody that needs it to have it, and that there wouldn't be any blocks or barriers to that. And so since Christmas 2009, right after my mother passed away, I. I gifted it to the world. Thank you. Uh, it's interesting because I got diagnosed in January 2009 with multiple sclerosis, my nerve disease. And actually at the time, I was in a wheelchair. And I made a huge change in my life, which was to spend more of my time here on Maui pursuing Mauitopia. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But w almost immediately, I was able to stop being in the wheelchair and start using a walker, which is what I still use to this day. So I've seen a quantum shift that resulted uh, uh, from following my life purpose. I'd like to make another shift, which is to get no longer need the walker, and perhaps the quest will be that path. It definitely will bring a lot of answers and shifts, because I found invariably that these subconscious components are holding our physical reality in place. And even uh, HeartMath, who has done a lot of extensive work on this field, they saw that our unconscious is governing our body, our physical body, and that our, the way our bodies are are a reflection of that. So if there's something out of balance, then the causal level of that's in the unconscious, in healing it first there, and then supporting the body, supporting the situation with all the nutrients and lifestyle and and shifts, you know, that are important. And this work does cause a lot of inner shifts in thinking and ways of being and allowing health and well-being. There's, there's a lot of self-punishment on this planet, and that's a whole different topic. But at these deep causes, there's a lot of feeling of redemption, that we have to redeem ourselves through suffering, uh, or suffering as a way of life. And, and this is something important to endure, to purify ourselves, to refine ourselves, to be more noble or spiritual or, or enlightened. Sorry, or enlightened. And so as you clear this mythology within, you can step free. So, again, I'm going to, this is kind of redundant, is how can people actualize their full potential when they are run by subconscious pro programs? Uh, can you repeat that question again, please? How can people actualize their full potential when they are run by subconscious programs? Yeah, that's the keynote. That's the planetary problem and dilemma. And we, we've seen acts of great heroism. We've seen amazing accomplishments and we have seen people achieve you know higher potentials but it is really hard for most everyone on earth when all these subconscious patterns are running and keeping us in a more limited reality keeping us being so much less than who we are and what we're capable of so what what i found is a, is a life path a life mastery path I developed in the quest, and so it's one of the practices of the quest, is as issues arise, you move into the healing posture, 
and you identify that subconscious component. So as you're hit with some kind of condition you're faced with, a relationship issue or work, financial, whatever, you'll have an emotional response or a feeling, a weight on you or feeling of the hardship. And as soon as you identify that, it's about going deep and seeing, okay, identifying that part of self that is actually adversely affected by it, but also as you take it through the seven steps, you find it's helping create it. It's part of the creation of that because the patterns that it's holding, the beliefs it's holding have created these movies in your life. And Therefore... And so the seven steps are all part of the life mastery path of the quest. Uh, yes. It's an essential element in that it allows us to be transforming ourselves as we're moving forward in life. So we're not trying to reach a pinnacle. It's not about stopping at one point, but it's it's more of a life skill. It's, it's part of your daily regime, let's say. If you're working out and you're eating healthy, you're taking rest time, and if an issue comes up, you're doing the seven steps. What I found happens as a byproduct of it, and this was an exciting discovery I made just by maintaining my own life with the quest and choosing not to have endless suffering over every little thing going on, but to get to it really quickly and to clear it really fast and step free, step free from, really, I've stepped free from some of the most horrendous things happening or gone through dark night of the soul passages and people never realized around me I was going through anything difficult. Because if you take each piece as it comes up and transform it, you are freeing yourself, you're freeing your potential, your higher self to be more active principle within you, and that active principle is creative, proactive, and a very positive movement in your life to bring you to the next level of the next of your creative potential. So it really became a, an exciting outcome of just trying to alleviate suffering and heal the underlying causes then I found a way to actualize our full potential, even while we're still embedded with, with patterns that are yet to be healed. Well, as you know, here in Maui, we don't believe, believe that suffering is necessary. <laughs> yeah. And uh, people remember that they're spiritual beings having a, a human experience. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it's always nice to drive to the radio station under a, a full rainbow. It was amazing. <laughs> a nice reminder. Uh, just going, yeah. going back for a second, you say spiritual bypass can make you ill. How do you think that works? Well, I know spiritual bypass intimately as I was a master of it. And, of course, you know, in my early 20s and even a little bit before, I had tapped into some what I feel were some of the most highest um, spiritual practices and insights, understandings on the planet. And yet, even in those movements, even in those philosophies, while there's very, there was very real assistance in getting centered and re-anchoring in ourselves and becoming that peace, there wasn't any kind of model or availability at that time to deal with shadow aspects that would arise. So all the upsets, what do you do with all that anger? You just try to meditate it away. Well, this didn't work very well, finally, when I was in an extremely heartbreaking relationship. My heart just shattered, and I was abused, and I was very much in love. I thought this was my soulmate. Mm -hmm. I was young. And, and it was so shattering to go through this that a year later I had contracted, well, I had two heart attacks in six months, and I had wow. contracted what was told to me would be a debilitating disease that would actually um, go into, like, MS and take me out of embodiment pretty fast. So I was looking at, you know, I was 33, and I had four small children, and I was looking at 
me jumping into the wheelchair pretty soon and going through the debilitating cycle. And I just said no. And that took me, you know, that no was so powerful. And it really took me, it led me on this healing pathway over seven years. And a lot of that was with pioneering doctors, training under them and getting certified in very advanced alternative medicine modalities that were just very much on the cutting edge. But I finally saw that to really heal this, I had to go deeper. I had to go in the psyche, and it was a kahuna in Hawaii who met me and, and said he had, and came back a couple of days later and said he had visions that in the future, which is a now, is now finally, that I would be helping heal people all over the world, and he knew he was meant to pass his lineage to me and that I was his successor, even though I was not in the family lineage to a soul family. And so he took my hand and took me in the psyche, and then I just kind of went on from there where I I went into my bachelor's, master's, Ph.D. program, and I ended up doing all this research in the psyche. And I found invariably that if we ignore the stressful conditions in our life and we just try to come up above them, which I had been so good at, <laughs> we will get ill. It will affect, infect our lives in some way. Or we might be dampened and not as happy and fulfilled. Uh, however, the effect, it will be ongoing because the unconscious parts of us that created the situation have not been healed and addressed. So therefore, that will be um, a living reality for us. And if we do clear things as they arise, masterfully working with ourselves because you know if we have an issue about somebody even if they're a monster <laughs> that issue will help us find out why why we've drawn this in why why we felt we needed this it will help us get to those deep underlying answers and heal it for the last time and then we can say no i'm sorry <laughs> you know i'm not allowing abuse in my life or i'm sorry i you know, I'm not going to accept this, but we can work with things constructively. So this was a really big one for me. And I think in 2013, people are still doing a lot of spiritual and mental and emotional bypassing of the issues because not enough people understand how easy it is now to resolve these things. And with the seven steps, it's fast. And why are you saying you think that 2012 to 2033 is such an auspicious time where maybe lots of people are addressing the inner issues? Yeah, we saw such great advancements since um, what I call the Violet people came of age in the 60s. And I know that's a silly sounding name, but I call them that because all the souls that were coming to me, all the people that are coming to me and getting this deep work and we're doing this work and transforming their lives a lot of people i was seeing that were undergoing this amazing awakening and consciousness and and had this fire in their hearts to make a difference on the planet and and it was incredible that everyone just seemed to have the same vision of a transformed world i realized this is a very violet energetic so the violet ray is very transmutative it's um per you know it's really a the energy of uh, personal and planetary transformation, which we're seeing in mass. So we started seeing really clear signs of this in the 60s. Peace, not war, the uh, human empowerment and potential movements. The age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius, uh, all of the things that we've seen to where now there's so many programs in place. There's so many great projects and endeavors and if you look on linkedin if you look in facebook if you look and see who's who in, in on the planet right now there are so many people bringing incredible offering and what has occurred is we're in this renaissance period now where the world is flooded with high keynote music arts architecture cures inventions programs projects this is really a birth, a new world, is that's what we're seeing. 
So through this global awakening and renaissance, we're, we're literally in the gateway. We're in the passageway to the new world, to a whole new world that's getting birthed. And that's why I've written the Earth 2012 to 33 series of books, because I see that a lot of people don't understand this. They can't see what I'm seeing because they're bogged down by, first of all, all their blocks and barriers and the hurdles they've got to go through just to actualize their potential, bring out their gift. But they see and listen to the news and all the ills that we're beset with. And yeah, we stepped into a very dark planet with a lot of archaic systems and a lot of unconsciousness and where the major focus has been greed and even to the destruction of and genocide of peoples and nations and great projects out of it. And so we're we're birthing all this in like dark dark matter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and yet we are. And by 2033 actually the world looks very different and I can say that quite honestly because I went to the future and I saw this with my own eyes. Oh good. And hopefully you saw uh <laughs> Mauitopia because I'm one of those people who did have uh, some visions about what will be in the future. And I wrote my fourth book, actually, Creating Mauitopia, about, uh, and I agree with you that it's happening on a worldwide basis. And at the same time, I'm having taught uh, change in, as a ma project management consultant for many years to corporations, I'm of the belief that one should create a prototype of what will be on a larger scale. And so I'm thinking, what does uh, what you were talking about as far as creating Mautopia, something that has never been done in history? As you know, we have a, on Maui 155,000 people, and there's never been a society that's a utopian society, or as you would call enlightened or uh, progressive, whatever you might describe it as. How is what you're talking about uh, affected or indicated as far as between now and 2033? I think we're going to see a lot of it, but I found the key essential element in it, and that is that everybody involved in it needs to become masters of working with their psychology. Otherwise, the project will unravel. The human personalities will wreck it. And we've seen that forever on this planet, that great projects get birth and the personalities undermined and it, the greed or whatever sets in. So that is an essential key element. And in my own path, as I was literally downloaded with the Earth Vision Project that I just hold really sacred in my heart, so I rarely speak about it, but I will mention it because of what you're speaking about. To showcase and really give an example of the new world, which that is what that project is about, as I launched it and as I pulled it all together and pulled the team together, there was a the personalities that unraveled it, especially one personality at that time. And then it was put on hold while I further developed the quest. And now... now I'm at the time period where it could be being brought forward. Because now I, I understand fully why, why it had to be delayed, and that's because I didn't have this missing element. Because I could see at that time that I could create something amazing. I could set the whole template of the new world in a beautiful property, in a beautiful island or a beautiful area, and I had found a property in Hawaii that I had thought was ideal for this, 172 acres. And and it would come undone. The people would not be able to live at that consciousness to allow a reality like that. And so it really starts from within, and each person being able to gift themselves and manifest heaven on earth in their own life experience, a, a full Garden of Eden reality. We, you can do it with unconscious patterns. 
is how I found with the quest, if you're always that watch person on the wall of your psychology and as the next piece comes up, you're transforming it, not playing it out. We could still manifest this given all of the unconscious patterning we are still beset with. But people would need to be extremely masterful to be a part of something like that. Otherwise, it'll look and smell a little new, but it will have the same old unconsciousness playing out in a myriad of ways and be an exhausting project, uh, just dealing with personalities alone. So that would be my wisdom and insight on on what sounds like a pretty amazing project you'd like to bring forward. Well, thank you. And I think one of the reasons Mauitopia has a good op- possibility for happening is because in Hawaii there's always been this pr- aloha spirit. And, again, it probably exists everywhere in the world, but the practice aloha way of being is part of living in Hawaii. And it's true for all of Hawaii, but specifically I'm focusing on Maui. As uh, numbers-wise, it's a good prototype, given that we have 155,000. In uh, Oahu, we have, they have a million people, which is a little bit bigger. But uh, practicing aloha is something that is done here on a regular basis. And I think we can continue doing that, as well as working on our psyches and that could allow Mauitopia to be formed over the next 20 years. I don't know if that's the right time frame. I know. Yeah. I do, think, I do think the Hawaiian Islands have an important destiny, and all the 26 years I've spent living there, it is where Lemuria is, that return of Lemuria. Of course, my friend, the High Priestess Kahuna and Volcano, Kumaola, Lena Ala, she shares her knowledge, not only of the realms of light, who are just really important aspect to helping reinforce and download the higher archetypes to our world right now, but also her ancestry in Lemuria, in the ancient way. And, of course, Lemuria was very key of a civilization on Earth that had started out at a very high consciousness civilization, and that which people long for a return to. And that's Eden. And so in Hawaii, Hawaii still has that resonance and beauty and magnificence. And the Aloha spirit is so prevalent. So if the people then were able to realize that their every issue with others or with the planet or with whatever is something inside them to be healed and would turn within when they're up that rather than making about that other person or trying to fix it outside or trying to change that other person, then we could have greater harmony. That doesn't mean we would stay victims to the meanness or unkindness of others. But if we do work inside ourselves and we clear our part of that negative dynamic and the part of us that had this person even playing this role for us, we up-level our lives. We can graduate all of us together in ascending scale of what many people are calling the ascension. Every, every time we do this inner work, we ascend into a greater, more fuller aspect of who we truly are than embodying more of that Allah spirit. And so if people just had this one key piece and ran with it, and they would be experiencing what I'm experiencing and some of my students and others is that we can be in that loving self. We can be in our proactive, positive self most of the time. And yes, we're going to have these shadow aspects. We're going to draw, they are going to draw in negative circumstances. But we can transform them very quickly if we do the inner peace. And then once we've done that, we're back in our authentic selves from that place of wisdom, loving, caring, compassion for ourselves and others. We can then do positive action steps to help further remedy the situation or bring a cure or bring a, an answer. Dr. Earl, would it be okay with you if we take a one-minute break and then open up the phone lines if anybody uh, would like to call and ask you questions? Uh, yeah, I'd love that. 
All right. Gary was going to cue up, I guess, Practice Aloha, which is a song we have that's Aloha, and you're listening to Maui Topia with Ori Kopelman, and today she has, he has a special guest, uh, pioneering doctor and healer, Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel, and she's been talking about her, the quest, heal your life, change your destiny, and if you'd like to call in, you can call in right now if you have questions for the doctor, uh, 242-7800, 242-7800, and if you're off uh the island of Maui, you can call 1-866-982-7800. And go ahead, Ori. Yeah, Dr. Ariel, can you uh, give your website where people can download the uh, the quest for free? Oh, uh, yeah, the quest for your life, change your destiny book is, um, the link is on the right side panel of my website, auroragiulianaariel.com, and that's J-U-L-I-A-N-A-A-R-I-E-L.com. And you can also see it, a lot of products. It would be really beautiful music, healing music, audio CDs, and seven books and more at aos.ws. So that's www.aos.ws. Thank you. And we've opened up the phone lines, so maybe we'll get calls, but maybe not. That'll be great. <laughs> I'd love to talk to Maui. <laughs> All the way from uh, Colorado, right? Yeah, high Rocky Mountains, just Rocky Mountain High. <laughs> I spend summers and falls here when I'm fortunate enough, and usually every year. And I really love that shift, you know, that spectacular beauty here and the pristine high Rockies, the dynamic energy and the beauty of nature here, and then going home to Maui and that incredible, um, of course, the, the Aloha spirit is a waves and waves upon waves of energy when I get home from everyone. I, I don't think anywhere on the planet I've found this level of loving. So people are loving everywhere, and especially here in Aspen. So, yeah, uh, it's just... Um, you know, again, speaking to Hawaii and its special purpose, I do think um, it has a high destiny, and all that will be unfolding as we move to 30, 2033. Would you want to hear anything about my journey to 2033? It was quite interesting. It was scientifically done as well. Sure. A really close friend of mine of 33 years, an amazing healer, Bernadette Chamori, is is a clinical hypnotherapist, and I was had this inspiration of really wanting to find out what the truth is about certain subjects in a way that it was accessing it 
through the unconscious and through hypnosis. And especially it was 2012, it was November, and I had been on different panels for years around that year and around what what's happening on the earth right now and the ascension and all that. But I wanted to see beyond my inner sight and what I was seeing. I wanted to kind of go for the gold of the truth. So she took a very long time to put me under making sure my conscious mind and my ideas and thoughts about it wouldn't would it fuck it up so that we could get this clear stream of of truth as I would journey into the future. And I went to a very, very high realm in the realms of light. They're accessing truth and was guided on this future journey. And it was about an hour-long journey where I went into 2014 and 2020 and 2033. And each time it was getting on to a monorail-type moving fast train into the future and seeing the archway of that time period and meeting people from the future who shared about what was going on. And I got to look over the earth and really see what was happening with my own eyes. Not only that, to get it all energetically. Now, one of the most important elements to what I saw was what you were speaking about with the Aloha Spirit, that spirit of love, and us becoming more and more the truth of who we are, which is love and loving beings and radiating that love to others and pouring love into our relationships, our home life, our own bodies, our families, and into the planet. And out of love, so much can get birthed. And one of the things I kept seeing is this increase of love vibration on the planet year after year, that people were coming more and more into their loving selves. And this is creating a vibrational shift on the whole planet. And not only that, as they were becoming more that loving, true, authentic self, they were accessing from the higher realms of light, from their higher selves, and the higher realms are bathing and bringing in the new archetypes, the new, new energetic for the for our world, a new higher, higher standard for our world. Um, so much getting birthed and flooded forth in these next years. So, what we saw up until now, up until 2012, was just like the beginning, baby stepping. And now it's just been a rock and roll with this release to the planet as people were becoming more and more of these vehicles and vessels of this higher music, of this architecture, of this higher archetypes. And I got to witness with my own eyes it becoming a physical reality as I went from year to year. And finally, in 2033, I had tears pouring down my face of such joy and awe of how much all of us who had cared, who had come to Earth at this time, who, of course, I call the violent people, what what was accomplished and how all of the dark elements that we're faced with had served us as a catalyst to drive us onward to birth this, and that the world was largely in peace and an amazing future beyond imagination was a physical reality in 2033. And for days, I was euphoric. And we actually, we recorded this, and it was uploaded by a friend here in Aspen um, who, who I hadn't even seen in six years. When I came for Christmas here to Aspen, the early December we met up, I let him listen to it, and he was going down to Chichen Itza for the whole 12, 21, 12 all Mayan celebration of entering the new cycle. And he uploaded it from there free, and it is online. And um, I don't have that information right this second, but I could get it if you think it's important to give it out, but it is free for anyone to listen to in the world, and it's been there since that time. And what what I've noticed when I have shared it with some small groups is the look in people's eyes and the transformation they go through when they listen to it. And I have been really surprised that the whole energetic of it transfers. 
and to understand what we're about, to understand what the outcome is, and that it is a tangible, physical reality in the future is so empowering. Not only that, just to take the weight off our shoulders of feeling we're up against so much and just to know we're all here together doing this. And can I ask you one last question, which is, are there more love-based, typically younger people who are now here on the planet uh, who may not need to do this work you're talking about as far as exploring their psyche, that they're kind of, if you want to call it, already there. They're already manifesting their higher selves. Or is that just uh, wishful thinking on my part, or do you think that's really what's happening? I believe we were more more access to our higher selves than our previous generations and our children have, and their children will too. I think higher and higher evolved souls are coming in and paving the way for this, that this is a huge, huge planetary event that many are participating in. And... Any are not even aware of it, which is kind of a funny dichotomy on our planet. But yeah, there are a lot. The thing that I would stress with the young people, because they're highly attuned and sensitive, the whole usage of drugs and alcohol have messed up and altered the course and actually stopped the destiny mm. of many, many young people. And I've worked with a lot of young people who are very high souls with really important missions, but when we put in these things into our brain chemistry, we start having mental, what's called mental illness, which I believe it will in the future be called brain chemistry disorders. Of We're almost out of time, Dr. Yell. Thank you so much for your time this morning, and uh, hopefully you will come back to Maui to uh, witness the creation of Mauitopia. This is Ori Kopelman, and I want to thank again Dr. Ariel for her time this morning.